The Agility T-Test The equipment needed for the Agility T-Test are a stopwatch, cones and a tape measure. To set up, you need to place four cones in a T-shape five metres apart. Using the stopwatch to time, the participant runs forwards to the middle cone, then sideways to touch the right cone, then across to the left cone, back to the middle and finishing by running backwards to the start position. My result of this test was 10.9 seconds, which is a good score as the average result for a woman is 11.5 to 12.5 seconds. The advantages are that this test can normally be carried out using the Brower timing gates if available, which will make the results more accurate. This test is also very simple to set up and requires minimal equipment. The disadvantages are that only one person can perform a test at a time, the results may not be as accurate from using a stopwatch, and weather conditions may affect performance. Reliability and validity. From the Journal of Strength and Conditioning 2000, K. Noah et al. found that the agility test is very reliable, suggesting that only a single test trial is needed to receive a true score. It was also said that the T-test has high validity due to there being the highest correlation with agility, leg speed and leg power. The isometric wall sit test. The equipment needed for this test is a wall and a stopwatch. Make sure the participant's back is flat against the wall and the legs are bent to a 90 degree angle. Then time how long they can hold this position for. While carrying out this test, make sure the participant does not rest their arms on their legs as it will affect the results and not be a fair test. I kept mine with my arms crossed or you could just have them hanging straight down so that the muscular endurance of only the leg muscles are being tested. My result for this test was 2 minutes and 10 seconds. This was a very good score as for a woman the average score is 35 to 45 seconds and an excellent score is over 60 seconds. The advantages for this test are that it is very simple to carry out with no special equipment needed and several people can carry out this test at the same time. The disadvantages are that an assistant is required to help conduct the test and to time. Reliability and validity. Research from Dish, Jackson, Mood and Morrow in 2011 found that the test was extremely valid in assessing the muscular endurance of the upper leg. It was also said that this test is very consistent in producing similar results across all participants and tests the same area of the leg regardless. The sit-up test. The equipment needed for this test is an exercise mat and a stopwatch. The participant lies on their back with their knees bent and feet flat on the floor. The assistant holds their feet while timing how many sit-ups the participant can perform in one minute. This test measures the muscular endurance for the hip flexors and the abdominal muscles. My result for this test was 45 sit-ups. This is a good score because the average score for women aged 18 to 25 is 29 to 32 sit-ups. The advantages are that minimal equipment is required and it's very simple to set up. The disadvantages are that an assistant is required to carry out this test. Reliability and validity. Results from Dinah, Golding and Dinah in 1995 found that the findings included a very high test-retest reliability of an R rate of 0.98. This shows a very strong correlation, therefore suggesting that this test must have very accurate results, making it valid.